Hey there YouTube, Shady Bills Garage here, and we are going to do a unfortunate update on my son's SSR Laser 5 Chinese moped and the little engine that could not anymore. Before we go any farther, please do me a favor, win yourself a free t-shirt. Uh, I'm gonna put a picture up here of the t-shirt that we're gonna give away. I'm shooting for a thousand subscribers. We're at 400 and something now. So at 500 subscribers, 750 and 1,000, I'm gonna send you a free t-shirt. All you have to do is subs subscribe and just comment on any of my videos, subscribed. Um, and at 500, 750 and 1,000, I'm gonna send you somebody a free t-shirt. Um, and if you want, send me a picture of you with the t-shirt and I'll put it in my next video and give you a shout out. All right, before we go any farther, this is my son's 2017 SSR Chinese moped that he actually had a lot of fun with. We bought it with around 1,200 kilometers on it. He just hit 3,000 kilometers, so a little less than 2,000 miles. And the little 50cc engine decided it had no more compression. It started losing power, losing power, losing power. And finally, when it got warm, uh, it would just not run anymore until it cooled down. We adjusted the valves, it didn't make a difference. It was time for a top end. Apparently, 2,000 miles at wide open throttle at 8,000 RPM, it was just too much for these little Chinese motors. So, thought about doing the big bore kit. I figured that would bring it all back together, but in my garage, in an old project, I had sitting around this 107 or 110 cc pit bike engine, um, and we decided to throw that in. Um, Chris, was it hard to put that engine in? No, very easy. All right, tell me some of the things we had to do. So we had to like take the bolts out, um, like these very long so, bolt things. As you see here on the old engine, it's easy to show. That's all that holds us in, this top bolt, this back bolt. And it bolts in here and down there. Did it slide right in, Chris, or do we have to modify anything? Oh, so like the, we, we had to put one in. It was very easy because, you know, it's the first one. It's pretty accurate, but then like, after that, we had to drill through the holes because it was like the... Um... We had to hog them out a little bit. They were, it was, the engine was a little different. Um, so we had to make the hole a little bit bigger. And as soon as we did, the motor slid right in. Um, and then it bolted right up. We used the same exhaust. Now the head on the 110 is a little longer here, about that much longer. So we had to make the hole in the exhaust a little bit bigger. Except for that, it all bolted right in. The wiring... We had one thing, the motor we took did not have a, a stator to charge. It only had the stator to run the bike. So we had to change the stator. But once we did that, um, and I will tell you, don't just get a stator, get a stator with a flywheel because I bought a stator and it didn't work with the existing flywheel. I had to buy a stator and flywheel combo that I knew worked together. And as soon as I did that, the battery started to charge. The wiring was as simple as can be. There are five wires. Uh, the two one, and they all match color wise from the new stator to the existing SSR Laser 5 uh, wiring harness. And as soon as we did that, turn the key, everything worked. Chris, why don't you turn the key, fire it up. Everything worked. The speedometer works. Lights work the power, the tachometer works. Um, we did have to uh, jump wire behind the headlight to bring power to the headlight and the tail light. Although the blinkers and everything still worked, um, the original motor did not run headlight and tail light unless the engine was running. And maybe because we lost the electric start, something happened there. So we had to jump a keyed on power to a brown wire in the uh, switch for the uh, headlights. And then everything works now. It runs perfect. Um, all right, Chris, you've been driving this bike for, I guess, a week now since we did the swap. Uh, tell me your thoughts. Um, it's it's way better because, like, I have gears at least. Um, the first gear is kind of useless. It's really just, like, a wheelie gear. No real use to it. And if you do wheelie it, it's just going to fold like a lawn chair. <laughs> Good point. Um, so I just kind of keep it in second gear when I first start off. I like red lights. Um, but... Really, it just makes it way easier. I'm not holding up traffic anymore. Um, and I can kind of just like, I don't know, go 35 anywhere, up hills and on the street. So we've done a few high speed tests and uh, the stock uh, uh, 
ECU or you know whatever the computer is, limits this thing to 7,800 RPM. And that is 44 miles an hour with the gearing in it. With the pit bike ECU uh, or CDI box, whatever you want to call it, I was able to reach, I'll put an attachment here, 49.7 miles per hour with my 220 pound ass on this thing. Um, I think if we change the sprocket, this thing would have no problem running 55 miles an hour with him. But that said, is this thing stable at 50, at 50 miles an hour, Chris? Nah, bro, it's screaming and it just, it just feels unsafe. It feels unsafe. This thing's happy in the mid thirties. I saw it today, you did 40 on the way to uh, soccer practice. Um, that might be a little much, get yeah. yourself in trouble. Um, this is technically not legally a moped anymore. It has no more pedals. It's got a bigger engine and we got rid of the pedals. Uh, so, you know, you gotta stay out of trouble. But that said, with me, this thing will go up any hill and accelerate and run 35 miles an hour up every hill. It is a nice little moped now. We haven't gotten a fuel economy estimate yet because uh, he's still on his first tank. But I assume it'll still be pretty close to the 100 you were getting, maybe 80 miles per gallon. It's probably going around 70, 75. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but do you have, uh, so what are the differences, did you think, between this engine and that? Is it a smoother? Is it rougher? Uh, well, kind of similar. Uh, this one has a lot more horsepower. You can definitely feel it. Uh, but like, I don't know, it also just kind of sounds like it's screaming at a, above 35. Sounds a little it does seem like this engine maybe is because the piston's a little heavier above 6,000 rpm at constant it doesn't seem happy where this little thing could run 7,000 and you barely felt it vibrating yeah. i think you just have more mass so i sure everyone wants to do is they want to see you give it a shot what does a 110 cc engine feel like in a moped give it a shot chris show, show me an acceleration oh and if you're interested while we were doing the engine swap, I picked this Tomas Targa up for him so he could still get around, um, which I will be selling shortly. But I figure I'll do a video on it first if you guys have any interest um, in a vintage uh, 90s styled uh, two stroke moped. So it fires right up. As you see, he has a four speed semi automatic. All the gears are down, which is kind of weird. That first gear, the first gear is punchy. Give it a All right, Chris, give her a rip. As you can see, first gear is really short. It's completely reasonable now. You can get out of uh, traffic, you can pull out of lights, so you're not blocking traffic. Will it wheelie now, Chris, in first gear? show off to your friends anyway everybody thanks thanks for watching do me a favor subscribe win yourself a free t-shirt be the first person in the world to have a shady bills garage t-shirt first first uh, person to 500 they get it well at 500 i will randomly grab someone not the 500 person but you know what i mean